Barrow was a farmer who used to work in his fields throughout the day and his wife Aarti was educated. That's why she used to take tuition of village children. But her daughter Sugna was absolutely unique. Whenever the result of Sugna came, her mother's head used to hang down in shame because Sugna always failed in exams. What will the villagers say? I give tuition to all the children of the village and my daughter herself fails? You spoil my name. Like every daughter, Sugna was also her father's darling. Why are you scolding her? Look at her marks. Two, three, four. Are these marks? What will villagers say? She is my daughter and she has scored so less marks. What will others say? You are concerned about the villagers and not my daughter? Maybe she is good at something else, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. You think I am her enemy and she will make you famous one day, isn't it? That I will definitely do, mother. Ha, ha, ha. Why not? Just from this day, Bhairav started thinking that in what Sugna must be good. Sugna, sing a song. Twinkle, twinkle. Uh, all right, all right, enough. Bhairav saw that Sugna was not even fond of painting. Neither could Sugna dance nor did she know how to cook. One day, the teacher called Bhairav to the school. Today Sugna had beaten up Ravi a lot. Why don't you make her understand? It is not good for a girl to fight like this every day, don't you think? Sorry sir, I will explain her. Bhairav and Sugna walk out of the school. Why did you hit Ravi today? Tell me. Because he hit my friend Tara. Why do you get into fights every day for no reason? And aren't you scared that someone will beat you too? Huh. Let someone try to hit me. I'll break his face. Okay. And do you know that? Everyone in the school says that I'm the most powerful. Then something clicked into Bhairav's mind. He took Sugna to wrestling classes. Sugna was very happy to see the people fighting. Do you want to learn this game? Yes, Daddy. I think this is a game that I would love to play. Okay. Bhairav got Sugna admitted in wrestling classes. And Sugna happily started learning wrestling. Sugna used to wake up early in the morning and reach wrestling classes. She used to practice throughout the day. One day, her uncle came to her house. How are you, uncle? I am great, Sugna. How is your darling studies going? Hmm? Is there any improvement or not? Hmm, it is the same. Still doesn't pass. And brother, she is now learning wrestling too. What? Wrestling? But she is a girl. You should not let her do all this. If she ever gets her hand broken, then what, Aarti? Uncle, no one can ever touch me. Oh, Bhairav, at least you try to understand. Wrestling is not good for girls. Please don't get me wrong. Brother, now if she likes it, then let her do it. Bhairav did not listen to his elder brother. And for next few years, Sugna continued to learn wrestling. Today, it was her state level match. Sugna outplayed her competitor. The audience could not stop applauding. Seeing this, Aarti and Bhairav became very emotional. Sugna won the gold medal and made her mother and father proud. Just then, Bhairav and Aarti said, Look Aarti, I had said that our daughter will make us proud. Yes, and mine too. In this way, Sugna proved that every child is unique. There was a lovely kingdom called Madhavgarh. Amartya Sen of Madhavgarh was a just, wise and bird-loving king. His kingdom was happy and content. The king had a very intelligent and witty parrot. That's why king was always pleased with him. One day, parrot pleaded the king. Sir, I'm missing my mom and dad. Can I go and see them? May I, sir? Please? The king agrees to the request of the parrot and he said, Okay, you may now go. But after meeting your parents, return back in five days. Yes, thank you, king. Parrot met his parents and became quite happy. He told his parents about the palace. Then Parrot returned to the king after five days. Why don't I take some gift for my king? Parrot saw a magical guava tree on his way. If I give this fruit to my king, he'll be very happy. 
will start looking younger and evergreen. The guava tree grew on the peak of a large mountain. The parrot had to work very hard to pluck the guava. Working hard causes the parrot to become tired. A poisonous snake comes by at night and eats that guava, turning it into poisonous. The parrot, unaware of this, takes the same guava to the king. The guava is given to the king by the parrot. The minister said then, My lord, according to the palace rules, everything given to the king must first be tasted. So this guava must also be tasted. Okay, take these guavas. The minister first feeds the guava to a dog. As soon as the dog ate the guava and he dies in agony, this made the king very angry. In his rage, the king beheaded the parrot. The king takes that fruit and throws it outside. After a few years, a guava tree grows in that same spot. The tree is laden with guavas. When the king notices this, he informs his kingdom that the guava from this tree shall not be eaten because they were poisonous. One fine day, an elderly man arrives in the kingdom and he finds comfort beneath the guava tree. The old man knows nothing about that tree. The old man eats a guava from the tree simply because he was hungry. When the old man eats the guava, he becomes young. An old man turned young after eating guava from a poisonous tree. The news spreads like a wildfire throughout the kingdom. As soon as king got to know about it, king couldn't believe it. How did this happen? Aren't the fruits of this tree poisonous? The king visits the guava tree to learn the truth. In front of everyone, the king allows a guard to eat a guava. As soon as he ate the guava, he turned young. Everyone became surprised. And the king now understood that the guava was once poisonous, but not the guava tree. The king is deeply saddened by the fact that he killed his innocent parrot. The king realizes before punishing anyone, he must verify whether or not he is at fault. So friends, we learn from this story that no decision should be taken hastily, but only after great thinking.